about what we have learned yesterday. Okay, what we have learned yesterday. Yesterday we learned what is called a hypergeometry distribution. Okay, this is a hypergeometry distribution. We do this distribution when we have select something and we are not going to replace the thing we select previously back. So that's a hypergeometry distribution. And the method we use is all the NCR method. We select uh, we have a couple of su uh, subgroups and what do you want from each subgroup and then over the total. Uh, and the second thing we learn is called binomial distribution. So what can be a binomial distribution? First of all, it needs to satisfy a couple of conditions. Uh, number one is there's more than one trial. Okay? So you repeat something many times, but it needs to be identical. Second, you only have two outcomes, one success, one failure, okay? So basically you can say, if I see the green color, that's a success. If I don't see a green color, that's a failure. So not necessary to see just green or red, okay? It can be green and others. So you can have success and failure. And number three is there needs to be independent identical trials. Each one has no influence on the next one which means your pr probability for the success and failure are the same for all of these N trials, okay? For all of these N trials, they're not influencing each other. And then that can become a binomial distribution. So for binomial distribution, I have three steps I want you to clearly remember. First, you need to label what is X, like you need to name the X, give a meaning to the X. So X is the number of heads obtained from 100 toes, okay? That's like the meaning of X. What the X represent? That's the number of head you obtain from like your experiment. Second, must write that line. That's a distribution line. So you tell people what is X distribution. X distribution is a binomial distribution. Okay, if that's a binomial distribution, I said there are two things will influence the probability. Okay, one is the number of trials you're doing. Okay, you want to do N trials, like that's the number of trials you're doing. Second is the probability of success. Okay. If you have a larger success, that will be easier to get 10 heads compared to a low successful rate. Okay, so that's the two things will influence your um, probability, okay, for particular values. X can take, what X can take? X will take from 0 to N. Okay, you can't go over that N because you just do that many trials and you can only success for that many times. So X, well, let's give a general meaning for X. X can be the number of success. Okay, not, not only the number of heads. Okay, heads in this case treat as a success. So basically X means the number of success. So I get 20 head means I got 20 success. So number of success is the meaning of X. Okay, it's the meaning of X. And now I want X equals to 20. So you want 20 success. And the third thing you need to remember is the formula. Okay, is the formula. So what that formula is, is NX. So it's NCX and P to the power of X and 1 minus P to the power of N minus X. Let's have a think about this formula, okay? I don't want to reason it because if I reason it, you just feel more complicated. But let's have a think what we actually doing. Wait, let me just charge my laptop. Okay, what, why we have that formula? Okay, first of all, let's ignore the NCX thing. Let's just have a think. The P to the power of X. So the P to the power of X. So let's say we toss a coin 10 times. Okay, we toss a coin 10 times. And I want uh, six heads. So you know that, let's say X is the number of heads you obtain. So X is binomial distribution with 10 times and a half as well. Well, let's say that's a biased coin, okay? Let's say that's a biased coin. Then my P will become um, two thirds, okay? This is a biased coin, okay? It's not half-half. So it's a biased coin. So I have two thirds to get a hat. Okay, I have two thirds to get a hat. What I want is probability that x equals to uh, six. 
Okay, probably x equals to 6. I want to get 6 heads. Okay, so the formula will be 10 select 6, 2 thirds to the power of 6, and then 1 third, well, 1 minus 2 thirds to the power of 10 minus 6. So, well, that's a 10 6, 2 thirds of 6, and then 1 third. To the power of 4. Okay, just ignore the 10 6 first. Let's look at that. That's the successful read. And how many success do you have? You have 6 success. Okay, it's success times success times success times success times 6 times of success. So, this is the failure read. How many failures do you have? I have 4 tails. So, it's tail times tail times tail times tail. Okay, so basically I have H, 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 T, 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 T. Okay, this is one of the possible outcomes I should have. Okay, one of the possible ones. So what's the probability of getting that outcome? Is 2 times 3 times 3 times 2 3 times 2 3 times 6 2 3. Times six, two and, three. and then times 1 3, 1 3, 1 3, and 1 3. I have 4 1 3. Okay, but this is not the only case you will get six head and four tails okay so what you actually will think about is oh you can have this tail tail and then six head in the middle and then another two tails on each end okay there's another outcome i should have so how many outcomes are there okay how many outcomes are there you can have four tails and six heads that is the 10C6. Have a think. That's the 10C6. How many situations you can have six head and four tails? 10C6. That many case, you will have six head and four tails. Why? It will be the same as there are 10 spots. Okay, there are 10 spots. I want to select six spots to put heads in. Okay, how many six spot you can do? That's the combination thing. Okay, you select six out of the ten, and then you put the hash in. Okay, that's the number of combinations you can have. Ten C six. So that's why in the front I will times the ten C six because how many are there? Okay, that many. Okay, each of them get a probability. Each of the outcome will have this exactly same probability because it's the six heads probability times together times the four tails probability that's one of the outcome how many of those kind of outcomes 10 c6 that many outcomes okay so that's the reason of this formula this formula is very easy actually it's very um sensible to have like n6 and then p6 1 minus p4 okay so the third thing I want you to remember is this formula here. Let's have a look at the question below. Okay, let's have a look at the question below. A survey shows that 60% of the students play in a sport team. Okay, 60% of the students play in a sport team. Okay, I will ask you in this way. If I select um, any maybe to ask, okay, do you play sport? What's the probability you think she will say yes? Well, in the school, there will be 0.6 students playing sports, okay? And I just randomly say, like, any, like, I ask you, do you play sports? And without answering, what's the probability do you think she will answer me yes? 0.6, okay? It will be the same as the whole school's probability. Yeah, on each individual person, there will be a 0.6 of the probability to answer yes. And uh, another thing I ask, like, I ask, um, I ask uh, Annie, and she says yes. And I ask Jillian, do you think there will be a connection between the answer or like she will still have 0.6 of the probability to say yes? Do you think it's independent or not independent? Independent or not? It is independent because whether she plays sport will be different, will be no connections with whether the other students play or not. So that is independent event. Okay, that is independent event. So each individual is an individual person and everyone got a 0.6 of the probability whether play sport or not playing sport. 
Okay, so they are independent events. Well, whether you play, not influencing whether I play or not. Okay, but maybe in real life there's connections. You are friends, and then you all want to play sport, and that's the connection. But in the question, okay, in the math world, there's no connections between each individual person. They are all independently thinking and then choosing whether to play sport or not. So everyone got a point six of the probability to play sport in the school. Okay. Now, if I randomly sample of 10 students and ask if they are a member of a sport team, find the probability that exactly three students in the sport team. So, I have selected 10 students. Well, let's do the three steps. This is definitely a binomial situation because you have 10 trials and each one got say yes or no, have the same chance to say yes or no. So, let me say, um, let x be the number of students playing sport or in a sport team so x will be what x will be a binomial distribution what is the number of n what's n what's n everyone you have n comma p here. What's n? How many trials you have done? Ten. Uh, what's the successful rate? 0.6. Okay, x is a binomial distribution with 10 and 0.6. Okay, with 10 and 0.6. So what I want now, I want exactly three students in the team. So probability x equals to three. That's the probability I want to find. Okay, probability x equals to three. That's what I want to find. And I have the calculator to find that. You get menu five, five, well, minus at a because it's a PDF equals to three. So I have 10, have 0.6, and have three that's a 0 0.0425 okay that's the probability if you ask three students exactly three answer you yes i will play i play sport in the uh, sport team so that's the probability Okay, B, at least half play in the sport team. What I can write? Probability of what? At least half. So what I can write here? X what? Uh, five. More than? Anyone wants to equal? More than or equals to five. Okay, at least that. So you can include the five. Okay, this is a greater or less than sign. Okay, we can we need to use the binomial CDF in this case. Okay, we need to use binomial CDF. In this question, we use the binomial PDF. Now we need to use binomial CDF. Okay, so Menu five five. I think in your calculator is E A B C D E, but mine's at B. Okay, binomial CDF. Number of trials I have ten. Successful rate point six. Lower bound. Okay, what's your lower bound? What's the minimum number you should achieve? Five. And what's the maximum number you should achieve? Okay, X cannot go over than 10. You ask 10 students. Only 10 students can answer you yes. Not going to be 11 students answer you yes. So it's 5 to 10. Okay, so it's 5 to 10. And I press enter. Ah, where is it? Okay, so 0 0.833834. Uh, Let's go 0 0.834. Okay, uh, one thing let you know. 
This is only words one mark, okay? Only words one mark because that's a directly calculator question. You directly work that from the calculator. You are not going to write calculator syntax on your paper, okay? So what you have here, do not write that on your uh, on your uh, working like as your working step. Just do not show calculator language on your paper. Why? Because in VK exam, there's more than three calculators I know so far, like can be used during the exam, okay? So only this one called binomial CDF. Other calculators not called binomial CDF, it calls something else. So you write this and the examiner can be, for example, I'm examiner from another school and I mark your paper and you tell me that's a binomial CDF. I was thinking, oh, what's that? I don't know how to use other calculators. I only know how to use CAS. Well, not necessarily everyone know your calculator's language and you don't need to show that on the paper. And someone says it actually you lose mark if you write calculator language on the paper. So make it very clear, do not write it. You just use your calculator to find the value. You don't need a step, okay? You don't need a working. You just directly put your answers into the question, okay? That's my answer and that's worth one answer mark. There's no working mark for this question. Do not write calculator language on the paper. Hopefully everyone remember, because during my year 12, there are two students trying to write that on the stack for many times, okay, during the year. So doesn't matter how I try to stop them, they just can't stop. Uh, well, like, can't help with that case. So make it clear, year 11, you're not going to write calculator language on your paper. Okay, next question. C says like at least two play your sport team. If fewer than four play in the sport team, given like if, if means a given. Okay, if means a given. What I can have, like probability of what? Can you help me to fill in the bracket? What I'm looking for. At least two. Well, let, let's go from older. How I can express greater than fear. X, X, sorry? What means at least? Oh, uh, more than Yeah, so more than or equals to two. And given that? Yes, fewer than four means definitely smaller than four. So x is less than four. So you're looking for x greater or equals to two, but at the same time you know that x will be less than four. Okay, that's some additional information you have. X less than four. So what's the intersection between that? Greater or equals to two and less than four. What's the intersection? Two and three. Okay, less than four. Less than four, I can say that's between zero and three. Right? Less than four means zero, one, two, three. Zero, two, three. Then the probability will be, okay, that's one mark, okay? That, that whole thing we write is one mark. And the next mark will be the answer mark. So this is like a CDF case. I go CDF, I have 10. And 0.6. Lower bound is two, upper bound is three. You want two to three, right? You want two and three, so two to three. So that's the probability for the top. And the bottom is, well, I can directly change it here. That's a binomial CDF. I change the value here. I want zero to three now for the bottom, zero to three. And what we have is that. So you use this value to divide by this value. You have 96 
nine, zero point nine six nine. Okay, zero point nine six nine. Okay, that's the probability that there will be two or three in the team, given that like less than four in the team. Okay, that's how you do a binomial distribution question and how do you use calculators to do this question. Well, I can't see it. 0 0.969. Okay, 0 0.969. Let's have a look at the next one. Example two. Example two says use a cast calculator to plot the following distribution. X is a binomial distribution and you have n equals to eight and p equals to point two. Okay, tell me what x could be. CDF for both because it's 2 to 3 and then the bottom is 0 to 3. Okay, tell me what x can be in this question. Like if a is 8 and p is 0 0.2, what's the possible number of success you can have? Well, can you have 0? Can you have 0 success? Can you have zero success? Yes or no? Well, I just do something eight times. Can I have nothing success? Yes? Yes. Can I have one success? Can I have 10 success? How many is the maximum? Eight. Okay, so that's the possible values for X. You can have no success, one success, two success, and two, like, all success. Okay, that's eight. Okay, so how to sketch this graph out? Okay, basically now I want to sketch this on my calculator. I want to show you the graph, okay? Also, I want to see what's the probability for each individual values. Okay, let you know how to do that. Now, what I want to do is, well, I will clear those two pages first. Okay, I want to make a curly bracket. Control and this bracket. Uh, uh, menu what well, add a calculator control and this I want the curly bracket is the button next to zero and then I will put zero comma one comma two comma three comma four comma five comma six comma seven comma eight in okay this is the eight number uh, nine numbers that can be possible for the X Okay, I'll go control VAR to define this. This is called the value of x, okay? Define it. This is the value of x you can take. And then the next thing I want to do is menu. Probability. Distributions. And then go binomial PDF. I want each individual value, okay? So I have eight times, okay? Eight. A uh, successful rate is 0.2. And do not put any value below because that says optional. Okay, do not put anything in. Just press OK. Okay, after that, it gives you individual values. Go to copy the top line down. And control VAR gives a value called this P. That's the probability. That says P. Okay, that's the probability of each individual values and go enter okay so you save the value of x and you also save the probability for each individual each individual points and now go to the graph page okay go menu number three graph entry and edit and go uh, scatter plot okay the x you press x in the y you press p in that's the two thing you defined before and press enter. Can you see a lot of dots there? Well, my graph is not really good. Well, you see a lot of dots here. And 
it's too like too low i want to be looks better so you know the probability cannot over than one right cannot go over than one so go window settings and window settings here our uh, x value is zero to eight let's go for nine then and then y value you can't have probability outside zero to one so i make it zero to one here and this graph looks a little bit better but it's still not very good i have still have a lot of space on top i will go to change it again make that become 0.5 and i make a little bit negative makes the graph looks better well see that graph looks much better now okay that's when x equals to zero x equals to one equals to two three four five six there's more here like by this um, setting is not good and if you want to read in each individual points you go menu uh, trees graph and then graph trees and you can see that value is four point that if you move to this that's three well I can't see it uh, well, you can't read the value. Actually, there's a probability at the back. So 0, 0.167772. 0 so you can read individual values by moving the arrows. Okay. On that one is two. On that one is three. Okay. You just move it and read the probability for each individual values. Okay. That's the graph of the binomial distribution. Okay. For a 8,2 distribution that looks like that. Okay, so just show you the shape of the binomial distribution. You can sketch that by yourself. Now come back to this one. I'm going to do a really, really, really important question here. Okay, so example three is a little bit different. Let's have a look at example three. It says the probability of winning a prize in a game. The chance is 0 0.25. Well, it's a quarter. winning chance is a quarter what is the least number of games that must be played okay what is the least number of games okay that's the end must be played to ensure that the probability of winning at least twice is 0 0.9 uh, tell me what you don't know what you don't know in this question do you know p p is a quarter do you know n in this question how many trials do you know how many trials are there no that's the thing ask us to find okay that's the number of trials i'm trying to find so let's say let be the number of times we need so I, how many times you win that's the x x must be a binomial distribution give you n unknown but p is a quarter that's what you can write at the moment I don't know n but i know my successful read is a quarter and also each individual game will be independent and then that's a binomial distribution and you want to see how many times you win the game then i have another um, sentence here it says like to ensure that the probability of winning at least twice okay probability of winning at least twice will look like that that's the probability of winning at least twice Okay, what happens to that probability? That probability is more than 0 0.9. Okay, that's the probability. That's what I can write. Okay, that's what we get. X greater equals to 2 is greater than 0.9. Okay, tell me greater than two what x can take about well, two three four what's the upper 
like limit. Until what? Two, three, four, five. Why you can't say up to what? What's the problem? I don't know how many times I've played. So it's two to n. Okay, it's two to n is the possible number you take. You can take. But if you think backwards, what you can't have. You can't have zero and one. Okay, can't have zero and one. So greater or equals to two means what? Means one minus the well means one minus the probability x equals to zero minus the probability x equals to one. That needs to be greater than 0.9. If I can't think forward, I can think about backwards. Okay, probability greater or equals to 2 means 1 minus the probability equals to 0 and equals to 1. Okay, excluding those two probability. That's the probability for x greater or equals to 2. Okay, so what I can have now is probability x equals to 0 plus probability x equals to 1. That needs to be less than 0.1. Okay, those two probabilities need to be less than 0.1. question first do you think the larger the n is the better or the smaller the n is better do you want a larger number of trials or want a smaller number of trials do you think whose probability is larger like like say uh, for example I have x is binomial distributed by 10 and point and quarter and then I have another is x is a uh, can't see it. That is the first one. I have another one. It's x is a binomial distribution with uh, 20 and then a quarter. Okay, for those two distribution, which probability do you think is larger? Well, whose probability? Uh, top one and bottom one, which probability do you think is larger? Well, just select one. One or two? The 10 one or the 21? The 21, okay? The 21. Why is the 21? Because there's more opportunity to get like greater than two, like two, three, four, five, six, up to 20. But the other one is two to 10. Well, just use your logic, okay? You play something 10 times and you want more than two times success. And you play something 20 times and you want more than two times success. Which one is better? Like, Definitely the bottom one, okay? Like you want more trials. So basically this time, this question, I want more trials. The more, the better. Okay, the more, the better. All right, let's back to here. Let's back to here. What's x equals to zero? What is x equals to zero? Well, it's so annoying to see. Wait, I'll just have... That's better. I'll use that. Okay, so what I have now is probability x equals to 0 plus probability x equals to 1. That needs to be less than 0.9. Okay, that needs to be less than 0.9. So what is probability x equals to 0? That is n0, a quarter to the power of 0, and then 1 minus a quarter to the power of n plus n select 1 a quarter to the power of 1 times 1 minus a quarter to the power of 3 uh, that's less than 0 0.1 not 0 0.9 uh, to the power of n minus 1 this thing needs to be less than 0 0.1 okay after expand this that's what you have I have to expand it. That's what you have. Therefore, uh, can you tell me what is n0? n0 is 1. Okay, anything 0 is 1. So 
So n zero is one. What is a quarter to the power of zero? One. Okay, so what you left here is three quarter to the power of n plus. Okay, what's n one? N. Okay, n one is n. Okay, that is just a quarter. So it's a quarter n times three quarters to the power of n minus one. That needs to be less than 0.1. Okay, it's a really uh, simple expression here. But even though it's simple, you can't solve it by hand. Also, you can't solve for inequality, complex inequality. You can't solve that in the calculator. So instead of putting this into the calculator, you will put an equal sign into the calculator. Okay, you put an equal sign in the calculator. If you put a less than, you can't solve it out. Okay, you can't solve out less than or greater than in the calculator. So what I need to do is menu three one. And then bracket bracket three on four to the power of n plus n over four times bracket. 3 over 4 to the power of n minus 1. Okay, I said you can't put less than 0.1. You can put equals to 0 0.1. And then comma n. Okay, that's what you have. You have um, minus 2.8, but definitely can't be minus. So n is 14.04. Two okay, fourteen point zero four two. Okay, do you think I need a greater sign or a smaller sign? We saw for equal, then that's an equal, but like I need to have actually greater or smaller. Do you think we need greater or smaller? Just have a think about what I have explained before. You want larger number of trials or smaller number of trials? Larger. So what sign I need to use? Larger. Okay, n needs to be larger than that value. So what's the least number of trials I should take? Well, it definitely needs to be an integer, right? It needs to be integer value. You can't say I play something 14.4 times. So it needs to be an integer, but which integer you will select? What's the next integer? 15. A n can't be 14, even though it's really close to 14. Okay, really close to 14. Let me show you if you select 14, what's the probability will be. Okay, if you select 14, menu 55, five, um, the CDF, if you have 14 and then successful read is 0 0.25 and then you want at least 2, so it's 2 to 14. That probability is 0 0.899. Okay, I, it's, you can't see, but it's 0 0.8. Can you see that? 8.9, 0 0.899 is not greater than 0.9. Okay, it's not greater than 0.9. It's not enough. Okay, it's not enough. You need another more. So it needs to be 15 rather than 14. 14 is really close. It's already 0 0.899, but it's still not 0.9 yet. So it needs to go for 15. Okay, go for 15. It needs to go up by 1. Okay, go up by 1. And also it's very makes sense. So what's the number next integer greater than 14.42? You are not going to answer me 14. It needs to be 15. Okay, it needs to be 15. So the least number of trials you need to play is 15 in this question. Okay, in this question, it needs to be 15. Okay, I'm not going to show you example four because it's pretty much the same as the front one. I still like the front one better. So you can have a try of the example four. Okay, you can try example four. I'll give you a hint. 
I will give you a hint. The hint will be let x be the number of tickets that wins the prize. So I want probably, well, I will have x is a binomial distribution with n comma one on one zero 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 zero. So what I want is probability x greater or equals to one to be at least 50%. Okay, you can start to work from that. Okay, that's the hint I will give you. Okay, that's the hint I will give you. So you will start to work from that. Okay, you will start to work from that. And you can find that's an extremely large value. Okay, it's an extremely large value, and that's correct. If you find really small value, that's incorrect. And what you can do is just trying to use the previous method to work on that. Okay, so that's the end of this exercise.